Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. Necrom Chapter, June 5th and June 20th. I want to come out with a video. The 10 biggest changes that you can expect with this chapter. So when it launches, you know what to do with your characters and why. In this video, I'm going to explain things that are going to affect your characters for both PvE and PvP. We're talking gear changes to tech potions. Is Oaken Soul completely gutted? Is your class safe? Or what do you play? in the Elder Scrolls in the Necrom chapter. This is not gonna cover the Arcanist. That'll be in a separate video in my opinion on that, but it has come a very long way and is in a lot better shape than when we initially reviewed it. So good job, Zenimax Online Studios. It's not perfect. So speaking of not perfect, here's the changes and what you can expect in the Necrom chapter. Before we continue with the video, I wanted to share about our sponsor. Frozen Flame is a fantasy MMORPG that shares similarities to other survival games. With so many MMOs, why should you choose Frozen Flame? It's because it has a unique dynamic weather system which constantly changes. Rainstorms, snowstorms, and other weather affecting gameplay. You'll need to adapt your strategy to the weather if you want to succeed or die. If you're up for a challenge, check the link to Frozen Flames in the description below. Now, back to our video. Coming at number 10 is melee range back to 7 meters from 5. Melee abilities with a range of 5 meters have all been increased back to 7 meters to aid in their use while moving and to offer poor breathing room and reliability in landing. So this change just really affects melee damage dealers up close and personal. A skill that I've been using for quite a while, Dizzying Swing was already at 7 meters so you can kind of get the feel for where this is going to be and how it's going to land. This is going to change a little bit on the Dragonite, more to come on that later because the Dragonite had a uniqueness passive that actually gave it's seven meters so for homogenization taking that away from the dragonite but i do like a little bit more breathing room for melee damage here is this absolutely game changing no but two meters adds up so you can continue to put damage down on the boss and enemies especially in pve but still there's a lot of advantage from hanging back in dungeons and other content if you struggle with survivability moving on to class specific ones and let's talk about the sorky porky first and that's in the number nine position the first change with the sorcerer is dark Dark Magic skill line, Dark Exchange. This ability and Dark Conversion Morph now also grant Minor Berserk for the duration they restore resources. Dark Deal Morph specifically now grants Minor Berserk and Minor Force. For 10 seconds, it restores resources. This is kind of an odd change because the Sorcerer definitely does not need more damage. What it needs is a reliable heal outside of the Twilight Maker Arc or a goofy shield that you have to use max health or max magic on. I don't know why they want more damage, but okay, Sorcerer is already super bursty. This just goes along with it, especially in PvP. Odd change. Next on one up is a good change, and that's from the Daedric Summoning skill line, Summon Storm Atronach. This synergy in this ultimate and its morph, Charge Lightning, now grant Major Berserk for 10 seconds up from 8. And it also increases the amount of targets this synergy will target to 12 up from 6. All this means is that Major Berserk is very sought after, especially in PvP. PvE context, and from 6 to 12 means they're really targeting the Trials players. So when you drop your Storm Atronach, especially if you're playing a one bar build, you're playing that Oaken Soul heavy attack build, you really want to get everyone in the Trial that Major Berserk. And essentially you could rotate these ultimates in your group to keep high uptime on Major Berserk. So it seems like a small change, but it's actually good for people doing Trials with Oaken Soul heavy attack builds. Good change. Next change up is from the Summon Unstable Familiar, the Summon Volatile familiar morph. This morph special attack now only stuns on the second tick rather than the fourth and final tick to make the stun less volatile in nature and help reduce the passive feeling of the skill. To make up for this loss, we increase the chance of applying the charge status effect from the special active damage to 5% per tick, up from one. This one isn't game breaking, it's the second tick, not the first. Sometimes with the first tick, you can actually activate it when you're under pressure and stun targets. But second tick isn't that bad because you're going to get some relief when you're taking pressure if you use this morph. Not game changing. This allows you to take a little bit less pressure off you if you're playing this early on. You just need to stun in PvE or PvP. Next up is the Dragonite and a big change to Burning Talons. In fact, two changes. Let's go over it. This morph's damage over time now will only apply if the target hit by the initial hit does not have a stack of the dot active, similar to Acid Spray to help the skill shine in more AoE effect situations. 
missions where you actively have to refresh the skill. Note, this will still continue to stack on multiple targets. A couple of weeks later, Burning Talon's also seen another change. The damage over time from this morph will now always apply to the target rather than only when they do not already have the dot active. Reduce the damage over time by approximately 27%. Increase the duration to 5 seconds up from 4. Burning Talons is still one of the strongest abilities both in PvE and PvP due to the damage over time, the quickness of it channeling. This is a pretty significant nerf to the ability, but I love it for the synergy and the crowd control and a bit damage over time. So this may impact the hardcore PvE or spamming it and just dumping all their magic, but when I tested on the PTS, the results were pretty simple. It just lasted a little bit longer. Next change up is to Elder Dragon. Remember, if you didn't skip ahead in the timestamps like a bad YouTube viewer, I talked about that the melee abilities have been changed pushed back two meters instead of five to seven so that affects a dragonite so this passive no longer extends the range of melee abilities and now once again at their standard range now this passive increases your health recovery per draconic ability slotted yay health recovery which really no one cares about so kind of a meh change they had to do something with it. Dragonite's passives are already just absolutely god tier powerful. So what are you gonna do? Just a little bit more homogenization. And again, it's already homogenized. I think that's a big word. Moving on to my other baby, my former baby, the Templar. And there's actually some really good changes coming in number seven. So the Templar got some changes, and the first one up is from the Adric Spear skill line, Focus Charge. This ability is morph now grants major protection for four seconds after reaching your target. Major protection just reduces damage taken by 10% in all contexts, PB and PvP. The Explosive Charge morph specifically, this is one that doesn't have a stun component with it, extends the duration of major protection to 10 seconds. Kind of an odd change, since the Templar doesn't really need a whole lot of survivability, so giving it built-in major protection is kind of odd, but you're going to see that as a trend here in another change a little bit later. So, so okay, Templars, even tankier? Moving on, next up we have Dawn's Wrath Solar Flare. This ability in Smorph now also grant Sun Spear for 5 seconds after casting, increasing your damage done with class abilities by 5%. Solar Barrage Morph. This morph also extends the duration of Sun Spear for 20 seconds. I'm absolutely in about this change. I love Solar Barrage, one of my favorite abilities in the game. If you don't know, it changed a while back to give the Empower buff. So the Empower buff is just basically PvE doing fully charged heavy attacks. This is what makes the Oaken Soul one bar heavy attack build shine. So it's really not usable in PvE because you just want to throw on Oaken Soul for that specific buff or just not use the ability. It's a dead skill. Now this ability is going to do awesome AoE. It's going to buff your class skills, which pretty much all you use on a Templar outside one or two buff skills. And it's going to allow you to do a lot more damage AoE up close and personal. Love, love, love this change for the Templar. Next up is Dawn's Wrath Backlash. This ability in its morph now needs 60% less total damage needed to reach their final values. If you don't know, Purifying Light and Power of the Light is essentially the delayed bursting tool of the Templar in PvP specifically. It's very hard, if not nigh impossible, to reach that entire value, so when this goes off after 6 seconds, it absolutely nukes a player. And this will essentially help in PvP pretty much in only. It's not going to help in PvE. But still, the issue with the skill backlash is it can be cleansed. It takes six seconds rather than blast bones or deep fissure. So it's a very delayed mechanic. But in duels and 1v1 situations, you're going to absolutely melt with the Templar. Another strong change to a damage skill. Sticking with the Templar still, we got another change, and that's to Rune Focus. This ability and Smorph now heal you for 2% of your max health every second they are active, rather than 4.5 seconds of your max health while you are standing in the room. So you're going to get healing throughout. Increase the healing effect by 200% when you are standing in the room, resulting in 33.3 increase overall while standing in the room. This heal is objectively much stronger while standing in the room. Even with low HP, you can really feel it. And when you step outside, you get some healing regardless of the morph. I'm taking the magic morph for this specific video, but the other one will heal you a little bit more as well. So another change to make Templars more sturdy, if not the most sturdy class in the game, still right up there with the Warden and the Dragonite. Absolutely fantastic change. If you want a little bit more tankiness out of your Templar. Now I have a bonus 
this, and that's for Lord Warden. Because I can't do 11 changes. That's just not clickbait enough for YouTube. So let's talk about the Warden. The big change for the Warden is coming from Arctic Wind, Arctic Blast Morph. This is one of the most powerful abilities in the game. The stun from this morph now fires off after a two second delay rather than immediately. So this is kind of a bummer because that stun really peels people off of you, but you actually can time the delay around your deep fissure for a more advanced gameplay, especially in PvP. But the delay does definitely hurt where I love the instant stun to peel people off of you. Still love the skill, still very good, but that's kind of a bummer. Moving on to number six, and that's a controversial one, Stealth the Tech Potions, and oh boy, the Yankers gave Zoss a lot of trouble on this one. Let me read the final change. The Tech Potions, reduce the bonus to tech size of these potions to 43.5 meters. It was originally 100 meters on the PTS. Those values will ensure similar power experience in the tech size as before, with the new update to how invisibility works with detection bonuses under the hood. If you watch this video, footage that I made. 43.5 meters is an astronomical amount. You're going to find all those AD bow users hanging out in the field with one detect potion. There's a million different combinations of detect potions to make, but it's really going to be a hard counter to gankers and someone in stealth. So I think they last about 15 seconds if you have the medicinal use passive up. And Zoss continues to try to get rid of bombing and tries to get rid of ganking and stealthing. I, I don't know why. Maybe people just cry about this on the forums, especially in PvP. I'm not a fan of gankers. Can't stand them, in fact. But people love them. It's a part of the game. And Elder Scrolls Online, what makes it unique. So... Yeah, you're going to get people that are going to quit the game over this because it's pretty obnoxious, 43.5. And that's not really how potions or any major ability scales anyway. It's really 28 meters. Interesting change. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm sorry, gankers, but hey, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you the facts. Moving on to number five and what I'm most triggered about, and that's a nerf of a mythic that actually didn't even release yet. Veloth Ur's Amulet. Of course, I had to make a video on this specific item. I was so enthralled, so fascinated, absolutely loved it. When it originally launched on the public test server, the One Piece added 4,968 offensive pen, and also the One Piece increased your damage done to monsters by 15%, crit damage by 15%, and reduced your light and heavy attacks by 99%. Essentially, what this was is a better Oaken Soul for people that like bar swaps. I ran through my Templar and Vatishram Hollows and absolutely nuked everything, had the time of my life, puncturing sweeps and jabs, felt like it did, minus the goofy animation. I thought this was going to be great for the game, and they absolutely gutted it. So now what it does is it reduced the penetration down to 1650, and the set now grants minor force while worn, rather than increasing your critical damage done by 15%. I, I'm just dumbfounded by this change. It basically makes Necrom gear sets almost worthless outside of a couple ones for Arcanist. Super disappointed. This set didn't basically affect the top end PVEers. It didn't affect the average new player. It gave you something cool to tinker with, just like Oak and Soul in the High Isle chapter that wasn't going to be broken in PVE and PVP to shake things up a little bit. And now you got just kind of this garbage mythic that you can use on the Arcanist because it doesn't use a whole lot of light and heavy attacks, but giving it minor force when pretty much everyone's going to run channel acceleration and barb trap anyways seems like the goofiest change they have done forever. Usually they nerf things three months later after the chapter's release. This time they decided to gut it before. Hopefully this goes live, maybe a little bit of change, but yeah, you can tell I'm kind of fired up about it. Absolutely goofy change and really hurts the Necrom chapter overall, in my opinion. Moving on to another goofy change or good one. People love or hate this set, and that's the PvP set, Mara's Bomb. So Mara's Bomb, the big component of it, I did a separate video on this in case you don't know, but essentially what it does is it heals you when dots are refreshed or negative effects are refreshed on you. And if you get a certain amount, it cleanses. And based on the amount it cleanses, it gives you a burst heal and removes all those negative effects. Well, that burst heal and that cleansing is going from 15 seconds all the way up to 30 seconds. So is this set completely useless? The answer is no. How bad do you need Mara's Bomb to cleanse and how much is it healing you for? 
Another set to consider is His Sap. This also basically gives you a decent heal similar to Mara's Bomb, but it does not give you the cleanse. Danger Trickery. Danger Trick Daddy! Also a great defensive set we've been using for years and years. Rallying Cry, and there's a bunch of other. I'll link the video in the description if you want all the specific suggested sets. But this is not the end of the world. If you go down Mara's Bomb, I would suggest trying it on the launch of Necrom and then just adjusting your build. What I love about Mara's Bomb is it comes in heavy armor, so it allows me to change things up where his sap comes in light armor so you're kind of pigeonholed in a running jewelry in a light armor setup which i do not like also mara's bomb can be back barred where his sap you really went on your body at all times hypothetically when i ran it and the healing was kind of noodle plus it doesn't give you that burst heal and burst cleanse so even though it's 30 seconds don't sleep on mara's bomb it's still fine it just does open up some paths to some other gear options moving on let's talk about plague break another pvp set and probably my favorite pvp set of all time in the Elder Scrolls. Plague Break is number three. This set will now only attempt to apply itself to enemy players rather than any enemy. Note, the explosion can still damage and be amplified by nearby non-players. People said Plague Break was dead. No, it's not. Plague Break will still nuke enemy players in PvP. It will not nuke and cheese NPCs. So how people were using this, including myself to be honest, were NPCs on the flags in Imperial City. You kill a bunch of them and then boom, they all blow up and kill players. Well, now it's gonna be basically just players that cause the explosion and the damage can still be amplified by non nearby players. So Plague Break still works on people. It's still gonna be a great set for bombing. It's not going to be a dueling set or something like that, but it still will work just fine. And we tested it. So just not going to work the cheese in Imperial City or on flags in Cyrodiil. Moving on to another topic that I did a video about. That's two changes to the Oak and Soul heavy attack builds. I have a separate video on this topic, but I'm just going to give you a rundown quick in case you don't know. Number two is the change to the Storm Master gear set. So Storm Masters is one of the five pieces you equip on the Oak and Soul heavy attack builds. It's base game. It does really, really good games. Damage. And what it does is it gives you a huge, very long bonus on the live server for 20 seconds to your light and heavy attacks. Now that light and heavy attack is only going to work against monsters because people were cheesing this set in PvP. They also reduced the duration of the bonus to 8 seconds down from 20. And they reduced the cooldown to 5 seconds down from 10. So what this results in is Storm Master still being a good set because you can still get decently high uptime in actual parsing. Not 100% uptime. And in content, it does really, really well. But there are some other und options. Noble Duelist, which is light armor, which I triply shy away from less playing solo. Undaunted Infiltrator is another option. And so many others. But essentially, my build is going to remain unchanged. When I ran the PTS version versus the live server version on the Vatatram Hollow Trifecta, my time was almost unchanged. Now, parsing it will go down, but I wouldn't freak out about it. It's still absolutely god mode and will carry you through most PvE. Last change up is a Another nerf to Oak and Soul Heavy Attack builds because it's really performing well. And usually they have something us to uh, strive for getting after this, but not so much in the Necron chapter. And that's the nerf to Empower Buff. Let me explain. This was also in the previous video that I'll link in the description. Yes, check the website, all that stuff. But Empower reduced this bonus to 70% down from 80%. This is basically the bonus of doing the fully charged heavy attacks. You will feel this along with Storm Masters, but it is not the end of the world. We tested this extensively on the PTS, especially in solo context. The class, the build still works very, very well. So my advice to you is if you have golded out the gear, you still love playing this specific setup, do Storm Masters, do Sergeants, do Oak and Soul if you don't know. It will still work absolutely fantastic and can still parse over 90,000 pretty easily without a lot of effort, but you will notice a little bit of dip on the parse dummy and in actual content. So those are the top 10, actually kind of 11. I gave you a bonus there with the Lord, Lord Warden. Honestly, Necrom chapter is a bit different than other chapters. There's not a whole lot of stuff to collect in like meta changing gear sets for both PVE and PVP. I'm gonna do an opinion piece video. I hope you watch that where I kind of give you a skeptical take on the Necrom chapter. 
but this should get you prepared. I will have the website update on June 5th and then June 20th when the console launches after we play. I'll probably do some tier list as well for solo PvE and also PvP since the Arcanist is arriving. Expected to be pretty good in PvE, all as a damage dealer, as a tank and a healer. PvP, it is lacking a bit. It'll be fun. It'll be new. It'll be interesting, but will it be enough to keep players playing in the Elder Scrolls? If you got something out of this video, hit that thumbs up. Watch me on twitch.tv slash Delta's game. My mom claims I'm the best streamer alive. Appreciate you.